love to dance. Mom put me in ballet classes before I could barely walk. I tapped my way in and out of more recitals for years. That old step shuffle ball change. But there is one woman who can really dance. She can do a two-step better than anyone. That woman, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. This week, four and a half months after Benghazi, Hillary Clinton sets the record straight. Or should I say, did the Washington sidestep? Ooh, I love to dance a little sidestep. Now they see me, now they don't have come and go. Ooh, I love to sweep around the white step. Got a little swap and leave the peace. Let's start with Hillary's response to that pesky question about the video protest. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest, or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? What difference does it make? It makes a difference to Pat Smith, still waiting to find out how her son Sean died. It would have made a huge difference to Ambassador Stevens had he been warned to prepare for an attack as a result of a video inciting violence in the region. It makes a difference to that lone schmuck sitting in jail for making the video which you blame the murders on. She spoke with um, Hillary Clinton. What did she tell you? She said, uh, we are going to arrest the person that made that film and we're going to have them prosecuted. And if it didn't make a difference, why did you use our taxpayers' money to apologize to the Arab world for the video? The United States government had absolutely nothing to do with this video. We absolutely reject its content and message. And by the way, you're right. It would not have made a difference if you hadn't misled us about it in the first place. By the way, did any of you guys out there actually hear her answer the question about the video? Ooh, I love to dance a little sidestep. Now they see me, now they don't have to Now, we know 25 to 30 people were evacuated from Benghazi. Here's Hillary's answer to whether or not she tried to find out from them what happened. I waited until after the ARB had done its investigation because I did not want there to be any, anybody raising any issue that I had spoken to anyone before the ARB conducted its investigation. Really? Since there was no mention of an accountability review board until eight days after the massacre, you're saying that for those eight days, you did not try to find out what happened at the consulate? Oh, yeah. I forgot. You didn't have to ask what happened. You were watching it in real time, right? There was no real time. There we got no the surveillance time. videos some mm. weeks later. That was the first time we saw any video okay, of the so, attack. So you got the surveillance tapes weeks later? No FedEx? No carrier pigeons? And I guess Charlene Lamb, your Deputy Assistant Secretary of State, lied when she testified, quote, I could follow in real time what was going on from the command center, the Secretary of Defense, the top military brass, and anyone who had access to a secure phone line or computer could follow that. And what about that August 16th cable that was personally signed by Ambassador Stevens to you, foreshadowing not only how they would die, but the very groups that would kill them, their need for more security, and the suggestion that maybe the consulate should be closed? What's that? You didn't get the cable? Well, this is how it works. When they say they need help, the enemy is close, and they want to come home, your job is to get them that help. So here's what makes it so sad, though. You knew to believe Chris Stevens when he asked for help. That's why you sent him there. That's why I sent Chris Stevens to Benghazi in the first place. Nobody knew the dangers better than Chris, first during the revolution, then during the transition. A weak Libyan government, marauding militias, terrorist groups, he was your friend, working in a place where everyone got danger pay. It was the anniversary of 9-11, and you don't even look at his plea for help. 
I'm not aware of anyone within my office, within the secretary's office, having seen the cable. But of course, you were busy. It turned out we had people getting over that wall in Cairo, doing damage until we got them out. We had a serious threat against our embassy in Tunis. I had to call the president of Tunisia and beg him to send reinforcements, which he did, to finally save our embassy, which could have been a disaster. What about where it really was a disaster? No one died in Tunisia. There was more than a threat against our consulate in Benghazi. There was an ambassador and one other already dead. And you had seven hours to come to the aid of Ty Woods and Glenn Doherty. But at least you were clear-eyed about your mission. If you were clear-eyed, why did your uh, department reject the request for 16 additional security agents? If you were clear-eyed, shouldn't you have known that there was no real Libyan government to turn to? If you were clear-eyed, shouldn't you have known that al-Qaeda roamed freely in and around Benghazi? Were you clear-eyed when the Brits left Benghazi because they had the attack? But your best pivot in this stance we call politics was your answer about why you weren't interviewed regarding the actions of the State Department. If they had thought that I was relevant or had information that would have helped the investigation, I would have gladly uh, discussed that with them uh, at their request. How did they know you didn't have relevant information? Hell, you were the head of the S Department of State, of the uh, Secretary of State. You were in the Situation Room. You met the coffins. You told the mom it was the video. You accepted responsibility. Now, I've run enough grand juries to know that I don't know if you have information unless I get you in the grand jury and ask if you have information. But then again, you appointed the investigators. Okay, so you couldn't talk because of the investigation that you called for, and then you didn't have to talk because of the investigators that you appointed. It's the perfect two-step. Had I been president at the time, I would have relieved you of your post. But the good news, we come out of this, as you say, with lessons learned. But didn't we already learn these lessons in the 19 accountability review boards over the last 25 years? So in the end, the dance continues all the way to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue.